Hey guys, so today what we're going to take a look at is one of the demo programs that I've included as part of the ESP Helper library. So if you don't already know, ESP Helper is a library that I wrote that automatically handles all Wi-Fi, MQTT, and OTA updates for the ESP8266. If you haven't seen it already, you should definitely go and check out my intro video for the library. It's on screen now, and it just gives a brief overview of some of the functions and how to use the library in general. So what we're going to take a look at today is the button demo. So you can, you'll find this in the examples for ESP Helper. And basically what this program does is takes an ESP module, like the one in the right-hand corner of the screen now, and you may recognize this from my vSwitch build. Uh, if you want to see how to build this, go and check out that video as well. And basically this ESP module doesn't have anything fancy. It just has a button on pin zero. And then you don't need it, but I also have some power handling uh, components attached to it as well, just to make it easier to power the module. And what the program does is basically automatically post a message to an MQTT topic each time you push the button. So it either will publish a one or a zero each time you push the button. So getting into how it works, we have up here at the top a few pieces of information. So the first three things here, we have the topic, which is whatever MQTT topic you want to publish and be subscribed to. And then we have a network host name and your OTA password. So these things are both re related to OTA updates. And the host name is just a name that you give to the ESP module. And that's what will show up in Arduino when you go to upload a program using OTA. It'll show up as whatever string you put in here. And the password is just a password for OTA updates. So that basically, you know, security. It's important, guys. Come on. So then we have our button pin and a blink pin. So the one other little thing uh, that we're going to be using on this is pin 1. And what it's going to do is basically, as long as it's connected to MQTT and your Wi-Fi network, it's going to blink the little onboard LED just in a little heartbeat. And this just lets you know that it's fully connected to everything and that you're good to go. So then we set this information here to a couple of strings, the topic and host name. And then we also set a couple of constants for our blink and button pins. So then we now, we also have a couple of variables, a couple of booleans that are the first one here, current state is a variable that keeps track of whether this is in the on state or the off state. Basically, whether it last sent a one or a zero to the MQTT topic. And the other variable here, last button state, keeps track of whether or not the button was previously pushed or not. So this basically helps us detect the rising edge when we push the button. So coming down a little bit further, we have our ESP helper set up here. So you need to fill in the network nickname, the your MQTT IP address, your network SSID, and your network password. And then you'll just pass that information directly into ESP Helper, and that will be all set for the initial information. So in setup, we have a lot of ESP Helper set up, but it's a lot less than if you were to try to have OTA, MQTT, and Wi-Fi auto reconnect outside of the library. So up here we have our OTA enable, set password, and set our host name. And then we also enable the heartbeat, that's that little blinking light on blink pin. We add a subscription to our button topic. So this is not only going to be uh, publishing to whatever topic, a one or a zero, but it'll also be listening. They'll be subscribed to that same topic. And that basically just lets this device, lets this program, receive updates on that topic as well. So it can 
So for example, if you have this button here control a bunch of lights in your house, and you also have those lights being controlled through Apple's HomeKit, if you turn all those lights off or you turn them off through HomeKit, you want to be able to update the ESP module and say, hey, all those lights are now off. You should be in the off state. So when the user next presses the button, it flips it to the on state. So we're also subscribed to the same topic. Then we just start ESP helper and set our callback function. I will note that you do need to set callback after begin. It's a little glitch in the library right now, still getting it all worked out. And then the last thing we do is set our button pin to an input. So now we're actually ready to be in loop and you can see that loop and callback, they're not very large. And in fact, it's just a lot of comments and white space here. So the first thing we do is we check and we run myesp.loop. Now myesp.loop will return back to you, basically whether it's connected to full connection, which is Wi-Fi and MQTT, Wi-Fi only, or no connection. And this is useful because we don't want to do any of this here. We don't want to run any of this code unless we're connected to both Wi-Fi and our MQTT broker. So once we've made sure that we have a full connection, we then read our button pin. And because this button pin has a pull up resistor and, is con and connects to ground when we press it, if it's low, then that indicates a press. So the next thing we do is we check to see whether we've pressed the button and whether last button state is high. So we want to check to make sure that last button state was not pressed. So we are essentially detecting the rising edge of our button that we've pressed it. And if that's the case, we then flip current state. So if it was true, it becomes false and vice versa. And then we check to see if current state is true, then we want to publish a one to the button topic. If it was false, then we publish a zero. Then the last thing that we do is we set last button state to low, which just tells it that it's last time that it did something, it was pressed. And then we wait for half a second. And this is basically just a poor man's debounce. There's no real need to, you know, do any real debouncing here. We just want to wait for half a second and not trigger anything else. So the last thing that we do here is if the button wasn't, or if the button was not being pressed, then we want to set last button state to high. And this just resets last button state so that next time we press our button, it triggers correctly. So that's all that loop does. And that's basically everything handling the button. The last thing that we have down here at the bottom is our callback. And that basically just anytime we get a new published string to our MQTT topic, it will check the payload and see if it was a one. And if it was, we'll set the current state to true. And anything else, I'm not really going to check specifically for a zero. Anything else, else, it, we're going to set current state to false. And that's all there is to it. It's really a pretty small program, doesn't do a whole lot, but it is really useful. And it's also a really good way to get introduced to ESP Helper because it has OTA, it's got the heartbeat, subscriptions, it's got a callback. It's a really good intro. So this is a great program to start on. So now I'm going to flip over here to my terminal where I've already subscribed to slash test which is what this little module here has been programmed to publish to. And I'm going to plug it in. And I'm going to plug it into this little flashing module, but I'm not actually going to flash it here. It's already got the program on it. And you can see that that little blue light is blinking, telling me that it's connected to both the MQTT network and Wi-Fi. And if I push the button, we publish a one and a zero.
So it's doing exactly what it needs to do, and it's just a really simple program, but it is really useful, and I have at least a couple of these throughout my house to do various tasks, turning lights on and off, setting the security system, things like that. So that's really all there is to this little project here. If you like this video, definitely give it a thumbs up, and if you like these videos in general, definitely consider subscribing to the channel. It basically, it not only lets me know that you guys like these videos, but also you guys will get updates anytime I post a new video. Alright, well that's all for today guys. Thanks for watching.